This is Nora Efron talking about You Got Mail. Nora, you grew up in a family of writers. Your mother and father are writers and they wrote lots of movies. What was it like growing up in Hollywood? First of all, we should say what movies they wrote. They wrote Carousel. They wrote Daddy Long Legs and The Desk Set and All um, those romantic the comedies. Jackpot and, yes. and, they, and they wrote two plays. And yes. both of which were based on material that they called from raising you. From their lives, <laughs> yes, from their lives. Okay, yeah. so what was it like growing up in a house with two writers? Did you feel, uh, not a pressure necessarily, but an inclination to be a writer based on what your parents did? No, I felt that my parents were screenwriters and therefore I was going to be not a screenwriter. Right. I was going to rebel and be a journalist. I mean, you would have thought that I was going to go and build log cabins or something. I thought it was the most diametrically opposed thing you could ever do. I mean, I think I was trained as a kid growing up in a very sort of strange way to realize that things weren't all that serious. My parents had no capacity whatsoever for anything that was genuinely painful. So if you ever came home with anything that was painful, they always said this thing that I say all the time. They always used to look at us and say, everything is copy. Meaning, someday you will be able to write about this and you will see that it isn't quite as horrible as you think. And that causes you, for, for good or bad reasons, to sort of develop a third eye when, when even horrible things are happening to you. Right. And this is Required Watching, where we watch the essential films from lists of cinematic influencers and look at them through the lens of, of learning about filmmaking and how to move forward. I'm your host, Trey Epps, and today we're talking about book superstore magnate Joe Fox and independent bookshop owner Kathleen Kelly, who fall in love with the anonymity of the internet, both blissfully unaware that he's trying to put her out of business. This is directed by... Nor Efron, uh, and, and both written by Nor Efron and Delia Efron, starring Tom Hanks, Med Ryan, Greg Kinnear, a whole host of uh, familiar faces. And this movie is You've Got Mail. In a city where everyone's looking for someone, Joe and Kathleen have discovered the best way to meet someone <gasps> Hi. is to never meet at all. We just email. Nothing. I don't know his name or what he does. Look, 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 look. Or where he lives exactly. What? He couldn't possibly be the rooftop killer. What they don't realize. What is that? What are you doing? You're taking all the caviar? That caviar is a garnish. Is they already have. Just Joe Fox. I'm in the book business. I am in the book business. What should I have said? A man who has made my professional life a misery. Tell me something, really. How do you sleep at night? Fight, fight to the death in love. Okay, I'll be a bit honest with you here. The rest of the year of films are filled with uh, things I haven't seen or things I'm a bit curious about. But people have told me that I like this film and society tells me that this is the film, uh, that this is something that needs to be watched because it's one of the rom-coms of our times. Here is a very unpopular opinion. Uh, those friends are sometimes wrong and sometimes we are wrong when we watch things because I watched this film and off the back of When Harry Met Sally and I gotta tell you, I didn't know what, I, what to expect. I am a child of the internet. I mean, my computer, I had a computer art school and <laughs> uh, listen, I, one semester they would teach me how to write by hand and how to write in perfect cursive. The next, I had a pen pal in Asia, and then they taught me the internet and nothing was the same. So, it's, 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 essentially I'm saying I lived in the Wild West. Uh, I, I even know what dial-up is. I used to run up my parents' phone bills by plugging up the, the phone wire into the back of the computer. I'm not really that old, but it sounds wild to think about how we get internet these days. And, and I 100% was in chat rooms. Uh, listen, shout out to my ASL people who know what that even means. Uh, but I, I was in those chat rooms. Some of my, my friends these days and best friends are people that I met not even knowing who they were. 
um, if I was being catfish. It's a, catfish wasn't even a term then. It was a, it was truly a wild place. But when I watched uh, when Harry met Sally, I, I I felt a kinship. I knew the the general gist of it, and I was like, I'm here and I'm ready to support this film. Um, and what I I think what was waiting for me was like this unofficial sequel to When Harry Met Sally. Um, Nora Ephron says that she thinks this movie is a sequel to Sleepless in Seattle. But if Harry Met Sally was about what happens when two friends choose not to complicate their friendship of sex, this movie is about two online friends who don't want to complicate their friendship with their personalities. And they were right. Um, this movie opens thrusting us in the middle of a relationship between Meg Ryan's character and Tom Hanks. And we have to play a bit of catch up. And I think, and I think we are to discern that these two are, ha have a thing and are romantic, even if they don't know it because they're both good people and they're in relationships and they're trying to separate their actual lives and their online lives, but they're very clearly have a thing, a bond, a chemistry, something with this other person. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think that's a bit of strike one because they're both in relationships and they're both like doing this thing that, you know, people have been in less trouble for like liking a person's Instagram post and it being considered cheating by that person. And here these two are having a full on back and forth, uh, like email session with each other for God knows how long. Um, <laughs> And they're both in very committed relationships. This movie, to its credit, does have a New York City backdrop, which, just like when Harry Met Sally, does something to my heart and soul because it, I, I think, I think it does a really great job of not not just romanticizing New York, but really giving it a bit of character in a way that I think wasn't, I, I don't know, I won't say wasn't or hasn't happened previously, but I think it's movies like this that gave like Sex in the City the right to, the real right to make New York City a backdrop. And I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just, I, there's something about this in these movies that feel very warm and comforting that I feel like may have been a stepping stone to some of the shows like Sex in the City making New York City a backdrop, uh, or not, not a backdrop, but much more of a character, the same way like Atlanta has, makes Atlanta a character. Um, I'm not saying this is the genesis of, genesis of it all, but it was just really nice to see how that happened before the big boom of making that happen essentially everywhere we looked. I know we're talking about movies versus TV shows, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I also think it's funny that Fox's bookstore, you know, is, was taking out independent bookstores. It was basically a Barnes and Noble. Um, and of course, a few years later, Amazon, which started out as a bookstore, ended up, you know, destroying other bookstores, uh, like physical bookstores and independent bookstores. Uh, <laughs> it, it, the weird vicious circle uh, that is, you know, commodities, whatever. Uh, but let's talk more about these characters. They aren't, how do I say this? I refuse to be the person to say they aren't likable. <laughs> but I think their flaws don't make much sense in the mechanics of the film. When they first meet in, in person, they're, they, they have this connection. I think they sense each other, right? Like they have this connection online. They don't know who, they, who they, each other are, but when they, serendipitously meets in person, I think they feel something for one another. And I'm at a, a bit of a loss about how they ended up being mortal en enemies. Uh, Tom Hanks's character is opening up this giant Barnes & Noble S book bookstore, and Meg Ryan is a shop, you know, an independent bookseller, um, uh, independent bookseller in her mom's side of the stores with a family business. My frustration is that I feel like this this was a bit of a miscommunication that could have been cleared up. Tom Hanks brings her, he brings his kids into this bookstore. I don't know why, because they get books all the time and they, the family literally runs bookstores, but whatever. Um, completely forgivable, but it just feels like they could have had a bit more of a conversation. Uh, and it felt like, it felt, maybe I misinterpreted it, but it felt like in the beginning, Tom Hanks' character was concerned about the community in which they were building this bookstore. So it just felt strange that it felt strange that you just had like this lack of 
I don't know, you just, you just try to from like this really sweet, gentle guy to like being a complete dick for no reason and has the nerve to continue to play with her emotions after he finds out that she's the person that they've been, you know, they've been communicating to each other. Um, and then at the very end, he walks in the park with his dog running the head and, and has like this little cheeky smile. Like it's been me all along. And she smiles back. And I'm like, I don't get how this is a love story. I don't get the reason. I, I don't get why Meg Ryan would never talk to him again to have this information and start to build up this friendship with her. And um, <laughs> like it built up this friendship off the back of like, he, 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 <laughs> He essentially, you know, got her out of business and she had to close the book, the bookshop and then miraculously ends up being like, the, like has a book deal or something. And OK, she's fine financially. That's just, that's what we're saying. But they start to be friends and he's just asking all these questions and probing and, and doing all these like things. And I just don't get how we are meant to understand that they are like it, it just seems like they shouldn't be friends let alone lovers it, it's just absolutely wild to me okay parfumery uh was written by Mikolos laszlo i'm sorry for butchering that name which is about uh two bickering co-workers at, at a gift shop in budapest who don't realize that they're pen pals it was then adapted for screen and you've got mail uh as well as The Shop Around the Corner, starring James Stewart, and again as a, as a musical in Good Old Summertime, starring Judy Garland, which is wild. Very, very different. I also think, um, what's that show? Uh, she Loves Me on Broadway? Is that, is that not the same thing? I feel like that's the same thing. I'm going to look that up, but I feel like perfumery, because I think they work at a perfume shop. So... <laughs> And I think it's set in Budapest. It's most definitely She Loves Me, which is a fantastic show. If you haven't gotten a chance to see it, it was on Broadway a few years ago. Um, really, really good. Anyways, this was the first film that was able to shoot in Zabar's. Zabar's, baby. Zabar's. First Cats with, uh, you got, uh, with uh, When Mary Met Sally and now Zabar's. Watching these movies makes me feel so in love with New York. And I, I don't think you get it unless you get it, but... Yeah, it's amazing. Um, all of Kathleen and Joe's emails were on a website, apparently, and I tried to find it, and I couldn't find it. I think it's been taken down uh, by Warner Brothers, but apparently, up until at least last I saw, 2018, it was still active, so wild. Now, get this one. This is a great story. A production assistant who worked on the set of You Got Mail was responsible for teaching Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, and nor Efron how to use computers and send an email. His name was Kevin Feige. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta love Hollywood for how incredible uh, like coincidences are or just how people rise up to the ranks. But if you don't know who Kevin Feige is, then look no further than the person who's running the MCU right now. Um, who has many other films and, and titles under his belt, but he's running the MCU and was a was a production assistant on this film and taught people how to compute. <laughs> wild, wild, what a life. Let's look into Kevin Feige a bit more. I can't wait for his memoir to come out. It'll be amazing. He's a really good, from stories that I've heard, he's a really good collaborator. Um, uh, yeah, I'm interested in, in, in just having a conversation about him, not about the MCU, just about like his journey within the system. Because I feel like, to be perfectly honest, I feel like his journey is, is, is one of the few that I look at and I'm like, I would love to have this kind of journey. Um, anyways, I, let's not talk about me. The next fun fact, Dave Chappelle was allowed to improv his entire performance. I am so happy to have seen Dave Chappelle. Think what you want about him. I think he's a legendary, legendary comedian. And I did not know that he was in this movie. Apparently he was meant to be in... I forget, I forget the movie. Was it when my Harry, he was meant to be in something else that probably would have broke his career, but then wasn't. Uh, oh, Forrest Gump. He was in it. He was meant to be in Forrest Gump. Wasn't. But then when he got this opportunity, he jumped on it. And uh, the power of collaborative filmmaking, he was allowed to improv. And I think it was needed, to be perfectly honest. I think when you see Dave Chappelle, it's such a boost of energy that uh, 
that wasn't there. Uh, I think it really complements the film. I don't think it like uh, I, I think it complements the film, but uh, I, I definitely think it's a scene sealer for just be him being the person who tells it how it is and and being like the best friend or at least coworker or colleague to Tom Hanks and and <laughs> I think telling it out how it is from a completely different perspective and it's needed in this very white bread film. Um, for scene stealers. I really liked the children. They were super cute. They were like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly when you've got me on set, but it feels like such an autumn Christmas time. Like, all, like it just feels like autumn in New York, and I, 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 I love that. Um, and the children were just, I don't know, cozy. I think, I think they did a really good job of making my heart feel warm. I think maybe it, and also Dishfell is a brilliant scene stealer. In terms of how, what would I have changed or how I could have made this better, I think there been a, would have been a better way to make their will they or won't they happen. I thought that Fox's, Tom Hanks's character's family would end up by, you know, taking a bit of sympathy on McRyan's uh, dwindling you know, bookstore, seeing it as an opportunity to stay hip with the locals, buying it, and essentially folding it in as a children's annex to Fox's. Um, and of course, of course, because it's the shop around the corner, they have to still meet and, and, and build this like in-person connection or at least like, or, or like maybe that's where their friction comes in, but they're still also talking to each other online. Um, um, and yeah, and I think, I think there's an aspect where like, so they're working together and, and, and he works a lot and it's because of this that his dad like, like he works a lot because of his dad and he just wants to make his dad happy even if he's unhappy and they work through some things and he stands up to his dad once and for all and like him and Meg Ryan get together. Yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, so it becomes a bit of like, it becomes a bit like a, a workplace, will they, won't they, workplace thing that, he, they, that happens because it's folded into boxes and he has to stand up to his debt. Anyways, I feel like this makes sense. My pitch made so much sense in my head. Um, let's get down to it. Is this film required? No, it isn't. I think if you want something similar but better, uh, watch When Harry Met Sally. I, I don't think this film is required, unfortunately. I know, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have. <laughs> I think these character love story deserves better. Um, I think I deserve better for watching it. But yeah. Anyways, with that, thanks so much for watching or listening. Please feel free to leave some comments. Uh, but look, let me know. Am I wrong? Do I have it all wrong about this movie? Am I looking at it through it? Like, am I being too uh, particular about what I think this love story should be? Let me know. Um, leave some, uh, if you're on iTunes, leave some star, five star reviews. Love to read them. Love to read them. Uh, until next time, record watching as a film club. So, uh, you know, let's chit chat. Let's engage. Peace out.